Welcome back. In this segment, we will discuss presses used in sheet metal working operations. So the machine tool that is used in sheet metal working operations uh, is a press. So in sheet metal working, large presses are applied for a short time interval, which results in the cutting or forming of the work material. In sheet metal working, forces are set up, guided, and controlled in a machine referred to as a press. Therefore, these operations are also called sheet metal press working operations because of uh, a press being used. Uh, or these are also called stamping operations as we discussed. A press in sheet metal working is a machine tool with a stationary bed and a powered ram. Ram is also called a slide. So this ram can be driven toward and away from the bed to perform various cutting and forming operations. So just to give you a broader idea that punch is directly or indirectly attached to the ram or slide and die is attached to the bed. And this bed and <clears throat> eventually the die is stationary and the punch reciprocates uh, with the help of the ram. And ram is, of course, further attached to the drive mechanism that is driven through uh, a motor, for example, and a flywheel in the case of a mechanical press. So punch moves up and down to and away from the work. So work or the strip or the blank is placed onto the die and required operation is performed uh, with the help of the punch. The forces may be applied through the use of a mechanical or hydraulic system. So these are two general uh, types or more commonly used types of presses, mechanical presses and hydraulic presses. When selecting a press for a given application, consideration should be given to the capacity required. So capacity here means the force that can be applied by the press. So this force is generally in the form of tons. So it is called tonnage as well, or it could be in the units of newtons as well. So we actually can calculate for a certain operation how much force will be required, and then we can select or purchase required press. So capacity here means the force that is required to perform a certain sheet metal working operation. The type of power, as we saw in the previous slide that it could be, generally speaking, a mechanical press or a hydraulic press. In general, for cutting operation like blanking and punching, mechanical presses are more common. And for deep drawing operations, hydraulic presses are more common because you require a smooth force throughout the stroke of the press. The number of slides or drives. So, Generally, there, there is one slide or ram on a press, but we can have uh, two or even three slides. So again, one ram presses are more common for sheet metal cutting operations, and two and three ram presses are more common for deep drawing operations. So uh, these two points should be kept in mind that mechanical presses, uh, the single slide mechanical presses are more common for cutting and blanking operations. And uh, two or three slide hydraulic presses are more common for deep drying operations. And we will see the reasons for uh, these factors as we move on through this course. The type of drive, especially in the case of mechanical presses. So we will see that we can have an eccentric drive or we can have uh, uh, a gear drive or different drive mechanisms are there. The stroke length and the number of strokes per minute. So the stroke length is the reciprocating motion of the ram or the slide. So what is the length of that stroke? And the number of strokes per minute is the speed of the press, especially the mechanical press. So these two, these factors, the stroke length and number of strokes per minute are more relevant actually for mechanical presses. So the stroke length is actually the total distance that the ram can move from the topmost position to the bottommost position. 
and the number of strokes per minute is its speed. Um, we will visually see these terminology in one of the following slides. Then there is the shut height of the press. That is actually the gap uh, between the ram and the bed. So that is the shut height. The type of frame construction, we could have a C-frame press or straight-sided press and speed of, 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 of operation as we saw it. And the number of strokes per minute in the case of a mechanical press. So, so we will define this terminology as we move on. So we are having uh, presses classified based on different factors. One of the factors is the type of frame. The type of press frame refers to the physical construction of the press. Frame design is important regarding size of work that can be fed how it is fed and stiffness of the machine. The frame of a press is fabricated by casting or welding heavy steel plates. So you could notice here that the uh, machine tool, the press that is used for sheet metal working operation may itself be made up of some sheet metal plates. Based on type of frame, presses have further two types. We have gap frame presses and we have straight sided presses. So gap frame presses have a general configuration of letter C. So they are also called C frame presses. Some of these presses have an open back. So this allows feeding strip from front to back in addition to from right to left. So some of these presses have inclinable frames. So frame can be tilted from front to back. This allows the parts to fall through the open bag by gravity. So these presses are also called open bag inclinable or OBI presses. Another type of C, uh, C frame, or you can actually see the gap frame presses is press break that is having a very wide bed and this is more common with the bending operations and we have turret presses. They are suited for sequence of cutting operations. So, here are examples of C frame presses. So you could notice in this case, this figure, that the part or the strip can be fed from left to right or right to left, as well as from front to back. So if, if the back is open, so that is open back press, and if it can be tilted back to, to remove the part through gravity, then uh, this is called open back incline. This is used for light operations, light cutting operations especially, but it has a flexibility of feeding the part from, uh, from three directions. So die can be accessed from three directions, from right, from left, and from front, and the part can be fed from right to left, left to right, or front to back. So its frame is having a construction of letter C. So that is why these are called C frame presses. So you could notice a motor, a flywheel, and this is the ram of the press. So under this ram here, the punch is attached. So this is the ram. So at the bottom of the ram, either directly or with the help of a die set, the punch is attached and this is the bed, so at the top of the bed, the die is attached, and this punch reciprocates and performs the desired operation. So again, this is the mechanical press, so you could notice the flywheel, this C-frame construction of the body, the ram, the bed, and again, the punch is attached here and the die is attached here, either directly or through, through a die set. So the parts of a C-frame press, as we saw on the previous slide, so we have a flywheel, there is a drive mechanism. So that is not very visible, but somewhere over here, or, uh, inside this frame will be a, a drive mechanism. This C-frame and RAM for attachment of the punch and the bed. So same part could be noticed here, the flywheel, drive mechanism, ram, bed, and the C-frame. This is a press brake 
So you could see that it is a it is having a very wide bed and a very wide RAM. This is the RAM. And so you could actually attach punches in series and similarly the relevant dies in series. So if you have to perform a series of operation, especially uh, in the case of bending dies, then this press is very suitable. So it is generally used for bending operations to be for, performed as a sequence. Again, you could notice the flywheel, the drive mechanism, and uh, some other parts of this press. The second type of frame in presses is what is called straight-sided frame. So these are called straight-sided presses. They have box-like construction. They are much larger than C-frame, so they are more robust, more strong as compared to C-frame presses. They have straight columns at both ends of the bed. They are open. Uh, at front and rear, and they are used for large and heavier work. So you could see in this case that uh, they are having straight columns on both sides, right and left. They are heavy, they are robust, and part can be fed from front to back. So they are open from front to back. You could notice a big ram here and the bed as well. Again, two straight columns in this case as well. Ram, bed, and feeding the strip from front to back. You could notice the drive mechanism and the motors as well. So more strong uh, presses. So they are used for heavy forces uh, and for uh, operation that require a lot of deformation of the starting blank. The second way to classify presses is based on the source of power. So more common are hydraulic presses and mechanical presses. Mechanical presses use a flywheel driven system as you saw in the previous slide to obtain ram movement. The heavy flywheel absorbs energy from the motor continually and this flywheel delivers its stored energy to the workpiece intermittently. The drive mechanism could be crank, cam, knuckle joint, toggle or screw. The maximum force is achieved at the bottom of the stroke. So these presses are very suitable for sheet metal cutting operations or light deep drawing operations. Hydraulic presses use a large cylinder and piston coupled by a hydraulic pump. The tonnage capacity depends upon the cross-sectional area of the piston and the pressure developed by the pump. So maximum pressure can be generated at any position of the ram, provided that we can um, uh, we can provide the required pressure. Then we can have manually operated presses. They are generally foot operated and they're used for very light work and there are pneumatic presses as well. So there are different drives that can be used for sheet metal and mechanical presses. So we can have an eccentric, uh, type drive, we can have crankshaft or we can have knuckle joint. So all of these actually convert um, the rotary motion into reciprocating motion of the ram. The third way to classify the sheet metal presses is based on the number of slides incorporated. Most of the presses for simple operations have single slide or ram. So the number of rams or slides is called action. So most of the uh, presses are single action, single action. Double action presses have two rams or slides, generally one inside the other. Triple action presses have three slides. So in, in traditional presses, there is one ram or slide and that actuates the punch as we have seen in in the previous slides. Uh, the double action presses are more common in the case of deep drawing operations. And one of those actually um, actuates the punch and second ram actually actuates the, sorry, actuates the blank holder. 
So first, the RAM actuates, uh, the relevant RAM actuates the blank holder and blank holds the blank in the required position. And then the second RAM that is inside the RAM that is uh, actuating blank holder moves down and performs the drawing operation. So one RAM is inside the other. In triple action presses, just like double action presses, these are common in deep drawing operations. The third RAM actually is used for part ejection. Ejection of the part from the, from the die. So multiple action presses are specified for the drawing of more complex parts. Single action presses are used for simpler operations and single action presses are mostly mechanical and double and tri triple actions. Uh, triple action presses are mostly hydraulic and uh, double action presses have uh, two rams, one to uh, actuate the blank holder and other to actuate the punch, but both move from top down but this third RAM, if it is used, is used from bottom uh, generally to actuate uh, the, to, to remove the part, to eject the part from the die. With the help of this video, I will try to explain the difference between single action and double action presses. So the, the presses that we saw in the slides were all single action presses, they, they had one RAM. Now, in the case of deep drawing operation, we need a blank holder. So you could see this blank holder is, is holding the blank here. And then the second RAM is actuating this punch that is drawing the blank into the die. So this is the example of double action press. So one RAM is actuating the blank holder, the other is actuating the punch. So first the blank holder holds the blank and then the punch performs the drawing operation. So one RAM, that is the drawing, uh, one punch, one of the RAMs actually is actuating the drawing punch and the other RAM is actuating the blank holder. So this is the example of double action press. So you could see here that this circular ring is the blank holder. So it will hold the blank and inside this blank holder, the drawing punch will actuate to perform the drawing operation. So first the blank holder has moved and it has held the blank in, in, into the required position. And then inside this uh, blank holder, the drawing punch is actuating to perform the operation. So you could notice the same here. So this one is the blank holder. This is being actuated by one of the rams and then the drawing punch will actuate inside. So this is also an example of a double action. So first, uh, the blank, held, um, blank holder moved and held back and inside this you could notice here that the drawing punch is uh, moving to perform the operation. So again, the blank holder, and this is the drawing punch. So this is also an example of a double action press.